Hey everyone, Savannah Tree Foundation Field Manager Jake Henry here, and I'm making a video today that I've been wanting to make for a while um, on topping of specifically crepe myrtles or Lagerstroemia indica. Uh, so this is a pretty controversial pruning technique that you see a lot here in the southeastern United States, particularly on crepe myrtles. Um, now this is typically done in the winter, so I'm filming this in September. Um, so, you, you know, it's kind of hard to tell this time of year usually, uh, but this one has been topped pretty aggressively. I'm not sure when it happened and we're seeing some of the effects still. Um, so I wanted to talk about this technique today. Um, now, as a quick note, crepe myrtles can get pretty big. The, the main trunk on this one here is probably close to 40 feet tall. Uh, it goes all the way up there. Um, so they can get pretty big. You know, they're typically planted under power lines. The cultivars can vary based on their mature height, um, but some of them get pretty big. And so sometimes you do actually need to reduce the overall height, which can be done in a, an effective way. Uh, but one of the ways we don't want to do that is called topping. And so you can see some of the effects here. And essentially what happens is they're just sort of cut straight off at the top, um, all at the same height. And what you end up with is an incredible amount of epicormic sprouts or water sprouts sometimes they're called um, so these aren't true branches that come off of here these are just sort of little sprouts that form just beneath the bark uh, for reference a true branch actually forms at the center of the wood and grows out um, so these are pretty weak now granted uh, crepe myrtle branches usually don't get super super big so it's not too much of a safety issue there um, but what happens is they sprout just so aggressively and this pulls nutrients away from where the tree could be growing instead. Now one of the sort of myths about crepe myrtles is that you have to cut them back for them to bloom uh, and that's not technically true. So you'll get the flowers on any new growth and so you can do that by just having a nice healthy tree. Um, it'll have new growth every year if it's healthy. Um, now one of the complaints is say, okay, well, my healthy tree is all the way up there and I, I can't see those flowers. <laughs> I would like to see those flowers. So you can actually do uh, what's called a canopy reduction or crown reduction. And so you can bring that overall height down uh, in an effective way that's actually healthier for the tree. Um, now that has to do with pruning it to certain points uh, at the buds, uh, trying to reduce the amount of re-sprouts that you get here. Um, so there's different ways to do that, uh, but the wrong way is to top them like this. Now, um, another method that is also somewhat controversial is called pollarding. And so with pollarding, you actually end up with almost a little fist at the end of the branch or trunk. Um, and I'll do a separate video on that because that's a really interesting technique that isn't explicitly bad, uh, assuming that you do it the right way. So. This one's just specifically on topping, and I'll, I'll do the pollarding one again later. Uh, but I wanted to cover this topic because it's such a controversial topic here, especially in the Southeast. Um, and it really isn't great for the health of these trees. So we want to make sure that we're pruning them and maintaining them uh, in the appropriate way to keep them healthy and keep us safe. We don't want branches falling off of these trees. So thank you all so much for watching and stay tuned for more videos. Take care.